Welcome to Lockbox, a podcast providing real estate professionals with action items for success. My name is Jeffrey Broger, and I'm going to be your host. I'm the founder of two real estate marketing and tech companies, Steezy.Digital and RealNurture.io. In this podcast, you'll learn from top 1% real estate and mortgage brokers the exact secrets to their success. Welcome to Lockbox. Welcome to Lockbox. My name is Jeffrey Broger, and I'm here today with Rudy Kasuma. Rudy, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you start off by telling our listeners who you are and where you're from? Well, I got in the business in 2007. Well, first of all, I came here to the best country on the planet in, 2000, uh, in 1998, went to Santa Monica College. Uh, then I got into real estate sales in 2007, right? So as a Bro, real estate agents, my broker asked me to do cold calling, prospecting, and door knocking. And I wasn't really good at it. And then if you remember 2008, the whole economy crashed. And I was like, man, what, what should we do? Right. So today, November 2021, in the last 12 months, my team and I, we sold over, we already closed over 825 transactions. Right. So what happened in between is the same me. Um, so what happened is that that's that's what we call a reverse reverse prospecting. Reverse prospecting. Interesting. Yes. So what do you mean by that? Uh, reverse prospecting. So remember in 2007, as a brand new agent, my broker asked me to do cold calling, prospecting. I wasn't really good at it. People was like cursing me on the telephone. And I remember I went back to my broker. My, I said, my broker, I think that this cold calling, I'm, I'm not good at it. And I like, wait, maybe my accent, maybe people don't understand what I'm saying. So my broker asked me to do door knocking. So I went to do door knocking. And then now the only difference between cold calling and door knocking is that now they're cursing at you live in person, face to face. <laughs> so, so, so as a brand new agent, I was broke, no money, no nothing, right? Remember, I never been in any type of sales. I was forced to think a different way how to compel the prospects to come to me instead of me chasing them because obviously that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called reverse prospecting where we compel the prospects to come to us. So back then in 2007, as a brand new agent, I didn't know anything other than the reason I get into sales because I read this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I, I host a game called the cash flow games. So that's how I get people to come into my office back in 2007. So I host the cash flow games for free. Right? It doesn't cost me anything. I just pay for the game. I host three times a week the cash flow games. Uh, we have about 20 people a week coming in each session. So I have three sessions. So each week I have 60 people coming to my office face to face, play games with me, the cash flow games. At the end of the games, it's a two hours game. At the end of the game, I always ask how many of you guys want to do this in real life? So I always picked up at least two or three uh, buyers from that. So that's the genesis of this. <laughs> that's awesome. I own cash flow, the game, and I read Rich Dad Poor Dad as a 17 year old teenager. So I am with you on all that. I think that a lot of the real estate investors and real estate industry in general were inspired by the whole Rich Dad movement. So, <laughs> you know, you're, you're definitely a good company there. And I'm curious now how you're continuing to generate, even when, you know, face to face might not be as prevalent, especially with, with the, the pandemic over the last, you know, 18 months. How are you now offering leads and prospects for your team as far as buyers, listings, when it comes to like online? Like, what are you doing on online to, to help with lead generation? Yeah, I think the secrets, Jeff, is that we, we as an industry, nobody teach us about unique selling proposition, right? So what is the difference? Why should anybody thinking of buying and selling a house with you over and above thousands of other real estate agents or our competition now is the technology. If I'm thinking of buying and selling a house today, why would I hire you to sell my house? Or I could have just gone online and there's many like billion dollars technology company that I could have just bought it my home, right? So, so what what we what I learned, Jeff, is what's called a unique selling proposition. A unique selling proposition essentially it answers the questions: Why should I do business with you over and above thousands of other options? Or I could have just done it myself. So, for example, the easiest way to generate leads now is what is it that buyers are looking for? 
buyers are looking for homes, but not just any homes, homes that's exclusive, special, that they cannot see online, right? There's so many online companies. Because if all you do as a real estate agent, just emailing them homes that they can see online, then what's the value are you bringing in the transaction? Then you're useless, right? Then you're replaceable than the machine. That's what I'm saying. Our competition now is not the other agents. Our competition is the technology, is the machine. How can you compete against technology? So a uh, unique selling proposition to generate buyers, the easiest way to generate listings is buyers that have a house to sell. And the easiest way to generate buyers that has a house to sell is we offer what they want, which is homes that's not available online. For example, if I run the ads on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace now, free list of homes in Pasadena between $1 million to $2 million, that's a move up price range. That means majority of the buyers that's buying a $2 million home, they have a house to sell. Right. And then I'm going to put homes that you cannot see online, homes that's not yet available to the general public. So that's how we get about 2,000 to 3,000 prospective buyers and sellers calling in every single month, simply by offering what, what is it that they're looking for. Well, there you go. I like the unique selling proposition angle as well and really understanding your value so that you can then properly communicate that to the market and attract the market to you. Right. That's that's kind of like marketing 101, but you put it in a very succinct way. And I appreciate that. So now you're you know, you're kind of a lead generation source for agents that want to join the team. And then you also help train and build teams as well. So do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you're offering to the team leaders? Yeah, you're right, Jeff. Uh, like today, our, our, our competition, like I said, is the how can you, a real estate, how can we as a real estate industry, how can you survive as a real estate agent and thrive in this kind of technology? Your competition is the technology billion dollars company with multi, you know, seven, eight digits uh, budget. So, and, and all these mega teams, right? Uh, when I first get started, Jeff, in 2007, I think I was the only teams in my area, San Gabriel, right? Today, everybody, all these mega team. So I believe the future of real estate is either you be part of a team, build your own team, or you join an existing team. The traditional solo agents model, um, I think that's obsolete. It's just a matter of time before the technology or the mega team in your area is going to crash you because simply because of the budget, right? Simply because we don't like, how are you going to able to compete with, for example, in my team, our advertising budget is like, like a million dollars a month, right? So how are we able to do it? And I'm not even the biggest, you know, there's so many mega team and technology. How are you going to compete with online companies that have eight digit advertising budget? Right. So so to answer the question, yeah, the future of real estate is you build your own team or you generate your own team. The traditional brokerage model, Jeff, when I first get my license, the brokers just a place for agents to hang their license. Right. Because the agents think, well, I don't know. Everybody has to hang the license in the brokers. But I think the future, the real estate office of the future is the broker has to provide way more than just a place to hang their license. Right. So, for example, here in my in our team at your home, so guaranteed realty, we generate buyers and listing appointments for the agents. So not only we license to the agents, Jeff, our buyers presentation, our listing presentation, our proprietary way to build a four million dollars GCI team. But we also generate face to face buyers and listing appointments. And I think that's where our industry is heading. Right. Because uh, we like what's the value that you are offering to to the real estate agents. Right. Yeah. And it really does come down to that. You know, real estate agents have so many options nowadays. And when it comes to the brokerage, no longer can you just stand by having a big name. Oh, you get the brokerage's name, right? That's going to add credibility to you. That selling proposition is come and gone. And, and the hyper focused and hyper local teams that are investing in marketing and systems for their team members are the ones that are exploding, crushing it. Each agent is making way more. They're serving the client better. I mean, it's just, it's a win-win. So that's why it's succeeding. So I'm curious about your entrepreneurial journey. What is the single most important action that you take on a daily basis that attributes most to your success? 
I think we have, this is what I believe, Jeff. Um, you gotta, you gotta marry your mission and you're gonna date your model. This is what I meant. You marry your mission, meaning you gotta know what's your vision in life? What is your mission? What's your calling? What's your purpose, right? What are you trying to achieve? And then you date your model, meaning the model may be obsolete and change, be flexible. Mm -hmm. um, so I always keep this open uh, mindedness because I think most real estate age or most any businesses, any businesses, the reason they are obsolete and eventually dies off like the entire travel agent, the entire travel agent industry is collapsed, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And the reason because the I think most small business owners, Jeff, and which we are real estate agents, we are small business owners, most of us, most small business owners, they marry their model. I always do it this way, right? This is my great, great grandparents brokerage, the, the, the Smith Realty. Well, the customers don't care about the Smith Realty, right? Because WIFM, right? What's in it for me? Everybody is listening to this radio station. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? So the name, the brand, it becomes irrelevant. In fact, you know what's funny, Jeff? I think I might be the only Remax agent. So I was a Remax agent for the longest time, but up until December 2019, I think I'm the only Remax agent. Correct me if there's anybody else, please uh, correct me. But to my knowledge, I'm the only Remax agent that did not put the balloon on my materials because I did a test run uh, towards my last three years. Remax is a very fine company. So this is no way, you know, obviously they are a very successful company. But my point is the customers don't care about the brand. And let me give you an example. So I did a test run, right? So I run a 20,000 postcard in the same neighborhood. One, everything is the same. One has the balloons on it. One has a unique selling proposition on it which is your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it. So I run everything being equal. The only difference is that one as the brand is the balloons one is that guess I my ROI, I getting more on, on. And again, this is, like I said, this is not about remax. It could be ABC Realty. Okay. I should have used, I used to have used ABC Realty because the company, the consumer don't care about ABC Realty. The consumer is asking what's in it for me. That's what the unique selling proposition is. So when we speak to what is it that they're looking for, when we say your home sold guaranteed realty, my business just like quadrupled because now people are calling. The reason people are calling not because they're looking for Ruri. To be honest with you, nobody cares. You know, the sad thing about this business, I used to think, oh, look at me. I'm so handsome. The only person that cared about me is maybe my, maybe my wife. I don't know, but my mom, <laughs> right? other than my mom, nobody cares about you. So you and I, if you want to be successful, we need to think what is it that the consumer wants and give it what they want. And that's how we can explore the business. So to answer your question, have an open mind because in the past, the traditional way, when I first get my license, they always brand, oh, brand it all about you. But nobody call me because nobody know like who, who, why am I calling Rudy? Who is Rudy, right? So, but the moment I change my name from Rudy Kusuma, the number one Colwell banker agents, whatever, to your home soul, guarantee I'll buy it. Business completely changed. Uh, you know, it completely transformed my business. So hopefully that answered the questions as, because today we live in this information age era, right? That means information is readily available. So we cannot just be selfish. It cannot be about us. It has to be about them. What's in it for them? Makes total sense. I love your passion and you're spot on that the broker's first and last name is not the unique selling proposition. And it feels good to see your name up there in the big letters or whatever, but you're a hundred percent right. If you instead do keyword research in your market relating to real estate, and if you want to be a listing agent, you put something like your home sold guaranteed, right? That's actually what people are typing into Google or, you know, that that's relevant to them, right? When they see it for the first time, they see it in the, the, cover letter or the, you know, at the top left of documents, you know, the, um, I'm forgetting the name. I don't Google even remember. Um, no, it, it's letterhead. I was thinking like, man, I don't even print stuff out anymore. It's all digital. It's, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the letterhead, you know, when they see the letterhead and they, they glance at the logo, if it says your home sold guaranteed, that's relevant to them. Right. And so it's just so important to keep that in mind. What is in it for me? And that's what the consumer is asking. So you need to ask what's in it for them. So really, really key. I love that. And that focus on not having it be about yourself and your ego, but like 
look, if I'm going to be successful, then we need to brand it this way that we need to focus on what's in it for them. So I love that. Now, you talked about a few things, like you gave one example, you said Facebook, marketplace ad, you know, list of homes. I'm curious, what's been your number one most profitable lead generation source other than referrals? The number one, the easiest, well, right now we are on radio, but let's say the most cost efficient way is search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. Right now, Google, Google my business, Google local, what is it called? Google, Google local ads. Google is the most powerful engine. I think Google is going to get into real estate space, if not already now. So uh, Google, and the reason I like uh, Google, Jeff, not only is the number one, uh, the the quality of the leads, they already, like, they're almost pre-sold, you know? Like this whole internet, the way I look at the internet now, it's kind of like a whole big pre-listing package, you know? Do you remember? I mean, I don't know, but uh, what, when I go to a listing appointment, before I go to a listing appointment, I use, uh, I have this pre-listing package box, right? So before I show up, the idea is to get the clients to, to pre-solve the clients, right? So they know you before you actually show up, especially when you're building a team, when you go to a listing appointment, that's not you. How can you be good without you actually doing it? Well, you got to create a system around it. But anyway, going back to the, the best leads generation, the number one is the internet. Google is because the internet now is whatever Google say about you is basically supreme <laughs> people will believe whatever google say about you right so so google is my favorite uh my number one not only the quality the quantity and like you mentioned just now we need to hijack how can we uh, what's the word i have an 11 year old son they call it a uh, life hack so how can you hack google how can you hack uh, search engine optimization so your home sold if you do a keyword search uh Jeff, under your home sold billions, over 7 billion. People are looking for it. So if I want to go fishing, I want to fish where the fish are there. They're already looking for it, right? So I just, so because of my name and, you know, we are in, I mean, uh, I'm in California. The law in California, Department of Real Estate requires us to put our company's name on it. So I was like, hmm, we need to put company name. So if I put ABC Realty, Kusuma Realty. Nobody cares about Kusuma Realty. Maybe my mom is so proud. Oh my gosh, my son, real Kusuma Realty. But other than my mom, nobody cares about it. So now the hack to hack the SEO, Jeff, is your home sold guaranteed realty, right? That's our company name. Your home sold guaranteed realty, your home sold guaranteed, I'll buy it. So now we actually enter the conversation. So when what when people are looking for in the search engine optimization and the Google, they're already looking. Those are all the fish are looking there so we just enter into their conversation google as you know google my business if you haven't done it you guys uh, google my business is free <laughs> people are looking for it and they already pre-sold because they before they will not call you unless they like you right so and so that's the cool thing about marketing jeff the purpose of marketing is not just to get people to call you but is to repel people who don't like you right so that way you only work with the people that that want to work with you so, right. so to answer your question, I love Google search engine optimization. Awesome. Great answer. And you're right. It's free. It just takes time or you can pay someone who's great at it to go through your brand book or your videos and extract, you know, your personality and then type up content that's SEO friendly and start to rank your page. You know, uh, it's a really important aspect of marketing is that organic, that SEO. And even if the leads aren't as quick because you can't just like turn up the ad spend and generate more. A lot of times they are higher intent, more qualified. So, you know, I run primarily an ad agency, but we do help clients with YouTube SEO and the leads that come from that. It's, it is like that, Hey, you know, come list me now. They've already watched an hour of your videos and seen you watch your testimonials and all this stuff. And then they call you. So it's, it's a really interesting way to go about it and help to create sustainability and, and uh, staying power with your, with your marketing. Because if your ads shut off, that SEO is still working for you. Right. So really interesting. And I love YouTube. YouTube is the best because YouTube is owned by Google. Yeah, exactly. It's the That's second largest hack. search engine. Yes. <laughs> yep. That's right. So with that being said, what are one to three books that have influenced your life or career? You already mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad. 
but I, you know, I'm curious about any like business scaling books or any, anything that really helps you your life or career. Uh, right on top of my mind now is 10 X, right? That, uh, is it 10 X? Okay. Is it 10x? Yeah, the 10x rule. I was looking yeah. at my I was looking at my bookshelf right here. Grant Cardone 10x rule. Uh, the reason I love about that book is it challenged your thinking, right? Meaning whatever you are doing now is probably not enough because uh yeah, so 10x, 10x rule is uh is uh, my 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 top ones, and then the next one will be Andre Leadership, Andre Leadership by Dave uh, Ramsey. So Andre Leadership by Dave Ramsey, it's teaching us on how to develop a business, like a legitimate uh, business that runs independent of you. Most of us as a real estate agents, we get brainwashed into the idea of working hard, right? But uh, right now we gotta work smart. We have to work smart. We have to create a system in order for us to thrive in this uh, what is this uh, information age era? <laughs> That's right. So right. those are my three. I think uh, Rich Dad. I read it when I was like twenty something. <laughs> that was like the first book. I, I used. I almost went to work for NASA. My major was mathematics at the University of Wisconsin. The moment I read the Rich Dad book, I dropped out of school. I quit my graduate school. <laughs> I went into sales. So so Rich Dad completely changed my life. And then 10x, 10x actually make me make me you know completely change the way I look at life in general. And then entry leadership is very specific about building a business system. That's awesome. I love that. And I have not read 10x, so it's on my list. But uh, I like Dave Ramsey's stuff as well. And and Robert Kiyosaki is just a legend. I think. Robert Kiyosaki is probably responsible for a lot of college dropouts because <laughs> the moment you read it, you just, you're blown away. You see the possibilities. So I love that. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious what you do for your clients that nobody else does in the industry that you know of. Like, what's the secret sauce that is really just making everything work? You mentioned your home sold guaranteed, which is awesome, right? If I don't sell your home, I'm going to buy it. Huge value prop. And it's a fairly popular one. I'm curious, like, do you have something that you do that just you don't know anyone else in the industry that's doing this? Okay, I'm, I'm, I have a couple of things, but Jeff, you tell me if there's any, because it, it seems like you interview all the agents. So, so you tell me if there's anybody else, if there is anybody else, I'll come up with my second one, okay? So okay. when we go, <laughs> when we show up at the listing appointment, the industry norms and standards, the traditional real estate agents, they show up with a CMA. Essentially, bottom line, they show up with a CMA and with a marketing plan on how to find buyers. When we show up, when my team, at, uh, when my team show up at the listing appointments, we show up with, at, with multiple cash offer for your home. So instead of CMA, we show up with offers, right? Like three offers, cash offer for your home. And on top of it, we show up with a database, with a database of buyers that, that we found a match looking to buy homes specifically just like yours in your area, in your price range, in your square footage. So we show up with two major things. We assume when we show up at the listing appointments, we assume the clients know the CMA. We assume the clients know how much their home worth. Assuming they know how much their home worth, we show up with two things. Number one, we show up with multiple cash offer, at least two or three. And then we show up with the book with all of our buyers, with all their proof of funds and buyers that work with our buyers agents now specifically looking to buy homes just like yours. So what do you think? Is that is that quite unique or I don't know. You that's tell quite, me. That's, that's quite unique. <laughs> Okay. Yep, that is quite unique. Okay, is that good enough? Okay, good. <laughs> no, great answer. Right. So I love that. I love showing up prepared, having multiple offers, showing the buyers, having the organization within your, your company to have the buyers updated that are looking right now with the specificity of what they're searching for and then communicating that quickly to the seller, even if the listing appointment is same day, hours later and, and agents showing up. You have all that ready. Boom. So I love that system. Really powerful too. So how has, throughout your journey, how, how has a failure or an apparent failure set you up for later success? Do you have like a favorite failure of yours? Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about my failure building a team, right? So about five years ago, 
when I was building my team, right? Everything looks good. Everything growing, growing, growing. And then you start becoming uh, complete. Was it complacent? I think, I don't know. Yeah, you become like, oh, we got it. We got it. That's why we never, you cannot be arrogant. When you are building a business, always stay humble. Because the moment you become arrogant, life will teach you a lesson. So five years ago, Jeff, uh, as a brand, you know, I'm a relatively newer agent, right? Five years ago, uh, selling over eight, bringing home over $8 million GCI, right? Thinking like you are a big shot. So what happened was five years ago, half of my team left, walk away. Can you imagine uh, my team back then was only like maybe about 20, 20 agents in the team, about 15 left. So I, that my, my biggest learning lesson is about, it teach me, it taught me about leadership. It taught me about team building. It taught me about culture. It taught me about a lot of, a lot of uh, business uh, principles on how to, how to build team, how to grow leaders, right? Because before five years ago, before it's all about me, like I'm the only ones, right? And as far as leadership I'm talking about, so it teach me uh, the, the measurement of a leaders it's not how many people follow you, uh, that mistake, that, that failure, well, not failure, you know, I, I don't believe that that learning lesson, how about that? That learning lesson, it taught me that the, the meaning of leadership is not how many people follow you, but how many, how many other leaders can you grow, right? Mm -hmm. So it completely changed my business model. Uh, so today we have, today, November 2021, today we have, 27 team leaders throughout the state of California. We have teams in Sacramento, in San Diego. Uh, I'm removing, I fired myself from the becoming the CEO of the company, right? Uh, and removing myself from the broker of records. So we are rem I'm removing and bring it as the uh, more leaders to run, to lead the organization, right? To inspire more people. Because I, this is what I realized, Jeff. Many, I think more, most small business owners are experiencing maybe similar, I don't know. The problem in your business is you. <laughs> the problem in the business is you. And that's the bad things. The good things, the problem in your business is you. That means you can change, right? That's why we always invest in the personal development, always grow, always learning, right? And that's the good news. The good thing about you you can change, right? Like for me, that was like, just don't give up, right? Five years ago, I was like, I'm a high I personnel. I mean, you know, in the DISC profile, I'm like a high I, I'm like a people person. So it was very, very sad day for me. I was like crying, right? Can you imagine half of the people left? So I was like crying. I was like, what happened? But luckily I surround myself with mentors, right? People that I look up to. Those, the two or three people that you keep close, those are the ones that's going to help you in the, in the valley, right? When, when there's a, when they said, because we live in, you know, in life, there's always peak and valley. So in the, in the, in the, in this valley of death, right? I call it when, when, when things didn't go as well, the two or three people in you, you need to surround yourself with strong two or three people. So five years ago, Jeff, I was fortunate enough. I have the two or three closest people that, that basically hold me up and kept me going. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So that learning lesson was to surround yourself with really quality people and mentors that can support you during those downtimes and also to learn leadership skills and, you know, take the focus off yourself. Don't be arrogant. Don't be egotistical because that's right when, uh, what is it, What is the saying? Pride before the fall or something, something like that. It's like, you know, when you're feeling really good about yourself and thinking that nothing can go wrong, that's when you, you, you're not looking at the road and you trip and you fall. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's great learning, great learning lessons there. Thank you for sharing that. So my next question for you is about overwhelm and, and focus, you know, when, when you're feeling overwhelmed or, or unfocused, what questions do you ask yourself or what process do you go through to get back on track? <laughs> well, I think I'm fortunate in this area. A <laughs> uh, long time ago, I realized there are four type of activities. Right. Number one is the one that you are not good at it and you don't like it. Number two is the one that you are not good at it and you and you like it. Number three is the one that you like it and you are good at it. And the fourth one is you are really, really good at it and you actually love doing it. So um, the reason I 
I hardly feel overwhelmed. If any, if I feel overwhelmed, I guess I do it one at a time, right? One, I, I, focus, I, I finish uh, complete one task before we go to the next. But the reason I feel a little bit less feel overwhelmed because I think I have delegated most of the stuff that I'm not good at it and I don't like it, right? So I, So essentially... What I've been doing now is the stuff that I really like and enjoy, like having this podcast interview with you. Like I, I actually like this, right? So I actually enjoy this. I don't feel it's like a burden. So I don't feel, well, is there an overwhelm? Yeah, I have another podcast tomorrow, right? Does it feel, sometimes it feels back to back? Yes, but if you love what you do, then you will make it. So hopefully if there's one learning lesson, Jeff, for your audience will be that uh, separate your activity. Look at all your activities now and separate it into four different tasks, different categories, right? The one that you are not good at it and you are not good and you don't like, you are not good and you like. The dangerous is this. You like it, but you are not good at it. <laughs> most realize that hey, most small business owners, they get stuck with that. I like it, but you like you are not good at it don't do it you need to fire yourself <laughs> right but, uh, yeah but if there's any learning lesson that will be it jeff uh put it into four quadrant and your job if you want to grow your business is to replace yourself so that way you can only focus on doing the things that you love and you are good at it <laughs> i love that it comes back to an age-old principle to do what you love and are good at and delegate everything else Right. It's very hard to do though. It's very hard to do. And, and I feel like when you don't do that, you're trying to take on too much. That's when you feel overwhelmed because you you shouldn't even be taking on that much, right? You shouldn't be needing to do everything from start to finish for all tasks. And honestly, that's strangling the growth of your company. Anyway, it's like you said, the problem in your business is you, (laughs) the good, the good news is that you can change. So I, 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 I love that. So, What's your process for evaluating what to say no to? I know there's a lot of opportunities out there and it's easy to say yes to everything and overcommit and say yes to too much. But do you have, do you have any type of process for evaluating what to say no to? As long as you know what's your purpose, right? So, for example, we are on a mission. I'm on a mission. Our, our leadership here at Your Home Soul Guarantee DLC, we are on a mission to help 1,000 real estate agents in the next two years, right? So, the, usually the stuff that I say no to, once you know what's your purpose, what's your goal, what you're trying to accomplish, then anything that doesn't accomplish that, you should say no to. So uh, I hard for me now, I hardly say no. Yeah, I think, so for example, hanging out with my Colwell Bank, I used to be with Colwell Banker before, right? Before I, So hanging out with my real estate agents groups that, complaints about how not fair this technology company taking over the world like how is complaining helping me right so so when when i know when certain people call me and i know usually these are the gossipers right the one that always complain about how not fair the industry how not good usually those are the one that i say no to right but uh but most of the stuff i always say yes this opportunity to have a podcast with you, like I have a back-to-back meetings, but I have to prioritize. So I, I say yes. How can I say yes to two things? Well, which one is more important than the second one? We delegate. Unfortunately, this podcast cannot be delegated, so I'm here. <laughs> right? That's right. Uh, right? Because so so I guess you can say no to the things that doesn't help to move your business forward. How about that? Right, but you need to know what moves your business forward. So classic example for real estate agents, yeah. Is it important to install the lockbox, install the Supra key, put it the, uh, put it the for sale sign? Those are all important in putting data into the MLS. Everything is important. But those tasks could easily be delegated by simply hiring an assistant. Right. And those are simple tasks. So I think most real estate or most small business owners, yeah, they're very... Um, control freak, right? So nobody can make the flyers better than me. Nobody can install this lockbox better than me. There's a right way to install the lockbox. I mean, the easiest way is this. How do you know which task can be delegated? Well, just ask yourself this question. Either you or whoever in doing that, will you change the outcome? If you don't change the outcome, then you shouldn't be doing it. That's it. Then you say yes to all the stuff that you actually change the outcome. And you say no. When I say no, that doesn't mean no, meaning somebody else doing it, right? 
everything is important, but the question, if you want to grow, we need to learn how to delegate, right? Delegate meaning, okay, somebody have to do it. Like right now I'm speaking with you. We are closing deals. We have transaction going on, installing lockbox. Somebody have to do it, right? So uh, everybody want to be the entrepreneur, right? So the question is, it doesn't have to be you. The question is this, if you want to grow, how can you be good at something without your direct involvement? If you can, if you can figure out that, that's you're going to grow. Interesting. Great advice. I like that. So is there a question that I should have asked you or anything that you'd like to elaborate on from earlier? You ask great questions. If, if there's one maybe. thing maybe uh, on the team building, I really want to encourage uh, real estate agents, Jeff, just now at the beginning, you asked about the value proposition to, to generate leads. And my response was, well, give them what they want. Homes that's not available online. I think most real estate agents will ask this question, Jeff. Your listeners, your audience will ask, okay, how do I get access to homes that, that's not available online? Because the problem as technology becoming more advanced, the moment the listings get input into the MLS, that listing gets syndicated to over, I'm in LA, I'm using CRMLS. So in CRMLS, the moment you input the listings, it gets syndicated to over 15,000 end user website. Essentially, everybody see the listings. So I want to leave with this challenge, Jeff. I think we as an industry, we need to learn how to set, negotiate, and collect your own buyer's broker fees. The reason every real estate agent only go to the MLS is because that's how they get paid. The industry, I don't think our industry has done a good job teaching real estate agents on how to set, negotiate, and collect their own buyer's broker fees. I'm not sure. You co uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Where I used to be with e ERA, Cobalt Bank. I mean, many find uh, very great companies, but nowhere. Everybody teach me to be a listing agent. Everybody teach me a listing presentation. Everybody teach me how to set my listing fees when I'm working with the owner of the house. But no one taught me before how, when I work with buyers, to have a buyer's presentation. Nobody ever gave me a buyer presentation. Nobody teach me how to set my own fees as a buyer. Because when I was a buyer's agent before the traditional real estate way, well, whatever the MLS is paying. The problem with that traditional thinking now, as you know, the, there's a huge decline of the commission being offered on the MLS. Sometimes it's zero. So if, if you don't know how to earn your own fees, like what would you do? The clients already seen the homes online. Right. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, I'm not sure if you heard about this big lawsuits, Jeff, Department of Realize, I mean, uh, Department of Justice, the Department of Justice against the MLS and the NAR. Right. You heard about it. So no Department of Justice versus the MLS. Essentially, uh, Google it up, uh, Google it up, Department of Justice versus the NAR, the MLS, Keller Williams, Remax. Uh, all the major, actually all the major brand. Essentially, if you read it, essentially what it says is the Department of Justice, they don't want, because they look at the MLS out of 2 million members of the National Association of Realtors, what a coincidence, the average on the MLS is about 2, 2.5%. You know, in United States of America, it's illegal for two competing brokers to have a standard piece, right? There is no such thing as a standard piece. All commission are negotiable. So the Department of Justice looking into this, how like, wow, this is interesting. Coincidentally, all across United States, two, two and a half, right? And then they look at all these common practices of what real estate agents do and says. Uh, so I think, I think it's in, in the near future, Jeff, I think in the near future, I believe all commission on the MLS will be zero. That means buyer's agent and listing agent each have to negotiate their own fees. Right, the mm -hmm. Department of Justice basically the, on the on the lawsuit that's going on now, they are questioning why would the buy, why would the owner of the house pay the buyer's agent commission? It's like it's like have you been to like a court and you hire a lawyer and then you are the other side hire a lawyer? Why would you pay the other side lawyers to beat you up? <laughs> why would you pay the other agents to beat you up? Right on a request for repairs and negotiation and stuff like that. So they're questioning that. Obviously, that has not come to a conclusion yet. The case is still ongoing. But my point is this. we The reason you can show them access to homes that's not available online, because once you know how to set, negotiate, collect your own fees, then you are not relying 
on the MLS for the source of listings. You can go to any homes, for example, for sale by owners, expired, canceled, withdrawn, uh, coming soon. They saw in the probate, divorce, foreclosures, new homes, new construction, and the list going on and on. But why? We as an industry never look at that. Everybody just look at the MLS. So if there's one thing, Jeff, I think that will be it. I want to challenge the industry. Let's elevate our skill, right? This is how we can compete against technology. Meaning, because the machine can, how can we compete against technology? Well, this is what we say, Jeff, with our clients. Hey, in addition to, in addition to homes that you can see online, would you be interested to have access to homes that match your criteria that's not yet available to the general public that you cannot see online? Would you be interested? Of course, people will say yes. And then they'll pay your fees, right? You can charge whatever you want uh, because now you're offering something that the consumer cannot get anywhere else. So now well, the, whole, the entire industry has a, they call it, uh, what do they call it, Jeff? They call it uh, commission compression. <laughs> They're talking about as technology becoming more advanced, the commission is going down. But if you, the reason your commission is going down, you have no value in the transaction. The machine has replaced you. But if you can show them homes that match their criteria that they cannot see online, now your commission can actually goes up because you actually bring in value. So that's just, I want to inspire people to start thinking in that direction. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. That was extremely helpful. And I know that your time is limited. So how can listeners contact you? Uh, online, go to www.yourhomesoldguaranteed.com. Yourhomesoldguaranteed.com. And uh, just Google it up, right? And Google it up, yourhomesoldguaranteed.com. And uh, we'll we love to chat. We, love, we have classes, Jeff. We have classes to help. Uh, to, so together we can elevate the real estate industry. Excellent. Rudy Kasuma, everyone, he is doing some big things out here in Pasadena, helping a lot of real estate agents, helping a lot of homeowners, home buyers. So you're really making a huge impact and it's always a pleasure to speak to someone like you. So I really appreciate having you on and for all of the knowledge that you, you dropped during this podcast interview. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. Make it a great day. Thank you for listening. If you want to accomplish your real estate goals, then I highly suggest downloading my free ultimate real estate goal setting framework. The link is in the description of the show and it will help you break down your annual income goal into the amount of phone calls, appointments, or open houses you need in order to achieve that goal. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.